By the morning of June 1st, I'd already spent several days out in Lafayette Square covering the protests that had popped up in the week prior. And each day, the protests during the day had gotten bigger and the conflict at night had gotten a little hotter. The last two nights before June 1st, we saw fires set around downtown D.C. We saw clashes between the late night protesters and the police, mostly MPD officers, but also federal agents that we couldn't even tell who they were. The night before had been the worst. We were out late into the night and got caught up in the battle between the late night rioters and the police themselves. I had gotten hit a couple times with projectiles from police. If we're not careful, Katie, so, ah, damn it, ah. Just Move out of the there side. as quickly as you can. I hit the side with either, I don't think it was rubber balls. I've had that before, rubber bullets or something. I don't want to be like overly dramatic about it. I know what it was. By the time we showed up to work on June 1st, we expected this was going to be another hot, difficult day covering protests. But ironically, that day was the most peaceful day of protest we had seen so far. Tons of folks packing the edge of the square, moms and kids and families. The city had really turned out. And by the evening, so had the police. There were Secret Service and U.S. Park Police in the park itself. There were National Guardsmen in the park and on the streets around it. And there were MPD officers surrounding the park. All of downtown D.C. had basically been given over to protests at this point. If you were driving around, you'd see National Guard checkpoints, buildings boarded up. The whole city was gearing up for something, and we didn't really know what that was going to be. Then, in the evening, we found out. All right, this is an extraordinary escalation on the streets in front of the White House right now. Within the last 15 minutes, mounted police have been coming down the street. You're going to see them in the frame now, using flashbangs in front of them and mounted police to clear what has been an entirely peaceful protest. Not 98 percent, not 99 percent, but 100 percent peaceful protest here today. And then within seconds, it went from peaceful to pandemonium. People were throwing things, fireworks were going off, police officers were firing flashbangs into the crowd, and we started to move backwards, trying to cover it as we were backing up, backing up, backing up. Ma'am, are you all right? I no, got, she's not f***ing all right, man. I got hit. And the scariest thing that I faced that day were these police horses, mounted police officers, coming down through the crowd, just backing everyone up. Ten feet tall, officers sitting on top. You know, the whole thing was just incredibly big and loud and unstoppable coming towards you. And the most surreal part of it was in my other ear, I could hear in my earpiece the president giving a speech in the Rose Garden. And the president was talking about being a law and order president and restoring order. and, and the messaging of what he was saying was just totally incongruous with what I was feeling and seeing in front of me as people were running away, afraid from police who were clearing this space. We got pushed all the way down 8th Street out to Connecticut, I think, the next street down, and that's when the tear gas hit. We were struggling to breathe. I was wearing a gas mask, trying to report, uh, trying to get my eyes clear. And finally then I stopped and did a live shot. And I remember taking off my gas mask and I had lost my coronavirus mask and just being furious at what we had all just seen. Well, Steve, I think the streets are quieter now because of the mounted police and the tear gas. What had been a peaceful day totally changed by the police for what we would learn later was a photo op in front of the church there at Lafayette Square. The next couple of days after that were really frustrating. First, there was denials from the government that anybody had used tear gas. We now know that wasn't true. There was denials that the park had been cleared for the president's photo op. We now know that wasn't true. And in the weeks and months that followed, we saw more and more Trump administration officials and D.C. officials uncomfortable with the official line. But no one was ever really held accountable for what happened on that day. In fact, the after-action report that D.C. police were supposed to produce still hasn't been released because they're being sued for possible civil rights violations that happened on that day. 
And that day really was a turning point in the protests, at least in D.C., what had been a protest purely about the Black Lives Matter movement and about the death of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and so many others, then became also a protest against the tactics used by the government to stop protests that they didn't like. And that was kind of a breaking point in terms of the violence, in terms of the intensity. Nothing ever came back to that same level of intensity, but it was clear from that day on, it was the city of Washington, D.C. against the Trump administration. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.